very important to note that there are people running races across the country that are very important for the future, not just of Las Vegas, of the state of Nevada, but for the country. And the lady we have with us in studio, certainly no exception to that. She's running for mayor. Uh, and uh, I, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, because I do a talk show and I'm not a journalist. I'm an opinionated talk show host. I absolutely voted for Shelley Berkeley for mayor. <laughs> She's running against Victoria Seaman, former Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley, joining us in studio right now. Uh, Shelley, thank you so much for being here. How are I, you? I'm very well, and thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're helping to fill up my day because the, <laughs> the day before an election, you know, you're, you kind of have been running uh, like a crazy person right. for almost two years. How tired are you? I mean, like, how do you have the uh, you're you're in your 70s, right? I, I am in my and, 70s. And like, like, I'm in my 40s, and I do a two-hour radio show, and I'm tired after okay. that. So. <laughs> like, like, how are you? How are you? You have, you're all over the place. Yeah, you know, I've just been blessed with good health and a lot of energy. Yeah. And that's what made me decide to do this. You know, I was at Toro University. I was a CEO. They wanted me to do uh, sign another three-year contract. And I said, you know what? Why don't I leave on top when everybody loves me? So I said, I'll give you a one-year contract track for a smooth transition. Mm. Then I started thinking, well, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And I, what do you love? I love public service. Mm. What? I don't want to go to D.C. again. I'm not interested in going to Carson City. I said, oh, my goodness, Mayor Goodman is term limited. So right, uh, right. there's going to be a vacancy in the mayor's mm. office. I said, how could I get that lucky mm. to to be the mayor of my hometown? Well, I think you will. I think I'll be calling you mayor very soon. I'm, I'm very um, excited. Things look very good. But as you could see from this, yes. I'm we're campaigning until the very end. Well, my whole right. family sure. is here. My sister in yes. studio with us. She flew in yesterday. Oh, I've got cool. cousins from Chicago. Cool. They're walking precincts yep. right now. And as I've got a niece, two nieces yep. uh, from L.A. that were bussed in over the weekend, and they're out oh, nice. canvassing. So it's uh, it's really That's is so a cool. family activity. That's so cool. So, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of the issues that people in Las Vegas are facing that you want to help the people here in Las Vegas are very similar to the issues that people throughout the country oh, are facing. Sure. It could be the economy, uh, jobs, um, although I will say, and I think you'll agree with me, that the economy under Joe Biden has been doing pretty pretty well. Uh, flourishing. Yeah. And I don't understand why the naysayers don't fully appreciate appreciate that. Every economist in the United States and the economists from London right. saying that we have the the strongest and hottest economy on the planet. Manufacturing jobs, unemployment rate is low. I think black unemployment is five point six percent. We're four percent unemployment rate throughout the country. When you look at the Nasdaq, when you when you look at uh, inflation, right, Shelley, it's under three percent. Inflation's down. Yeah. Uh, gas prices down. Right. E employment up. Right. I mean, this is a good, strong economy, and especially so since we came from. You know, we got out of the uh, pandemic, and uh, you know, it really did do some damage to the economy, sure. and uh, no doubt people suffered. Not mm -hmm. only the people that got COVID, but uh, people that relied on jobs with businesses shut down but uh, frankly we're we're going gangbusters and rather than appreciating it people are bad mouthing the economy i don't when understand when you say people it. it's usually maga republicans that are doing that uh, but you know yeah. because they yeah. have such a, a a a big megaphone right. and of course because donald trump is uh, you know talks about how awful the economy is uh, people believe it do you agree people with me shelly that if donald trump was president right now he'd be bragging about this is the best economy that the country has ever seen. <laughs> This is the best. It's the yeah. best. Sorry, that's my horrible Donald Trump yeah, impersonation. Yeah, that is pretty horrible. <laughs> actually, pretty, no pretty bad. John DiDomenico <laughs> comes on all the time. I don't know if you know John. Oh, okay. He's great. He's a pretty good Trump impersonator. But, you know, it's interesting because, you know, John Ralston, you know John pretty well. Great Very guy. Well. The, the Nevada Independent. And he just put out his predictions today. Yes. And this affects you, too. Uh, I mean, but he said that, you know, even though a lot of Republicans, not just here mm -hmm. in, in Las Vegas, but in the state, mm -hmm. have voted early, he still predicts that Harris is going to win. He's predicted some of the local races. He predicted you're going to win the mayor, yeah. as as I am as well. But 
does that concern you at all? I guess that's my question, because not just throughout the country, but particularly here in the state of Nevada, that so many Republicans have voted early. Does that mean what does that mean to you? Well, you know, I think that Donald Trump gave them permission to vote early. Remember, in the last two presidential elections, he was bad mouthing vote by mail. You know, don't vote by mail. It's fraudulent. It's, uh, you know, you can't trust it. And and don't vote early. And so I think Republicans waited and voted on Election Day just to be sure their vote counted. Mm. Now he gave permission because uh, he's still not keen on the mail-in ballots, but he uh, decided that early voting would be good. So maybe it's not maybe more Republicans, but they've just shifted their voting pattern. Mm. So instead of voting late uh, on, well, voting late, voting on Election Day, uh, they decided to vote early. It's yeah. a, You know, I Oh, I was a traditionalist. When they we started doing early voting in Nevada, I voted on election day. And then a few uh, a few elections ago, my husband and I are in Albertsons in our neighborhood. We do shopping, and there, uh, you know, there are voting booths. Yeah. And we, I looked at my husband. I said, you know, we're here. Why don't we just vote? Mm-hmm. And it took like two and a half seconds. There was no line. And after we finished voting, we looked at each other. I said, what have I been yeah. thinking? Yeah. This is great. So we always vote now on the sure. first day of early voting and getting it out of it's the way. It's important. You know, I, I look at your opponent, and, and, and we'll talk a little bit about the, the differences here, but I, I believe your positions compared to where your opponent, uh, Seaman, stands are very similar to a lot of the positions of Democrats versus MAGA Republicans mm-hmm. today. I don't know mm-hmm. if you define your opponent as a MAGA Republican, but uh, would you? I, I don't even know I, if that's I, a fair characterization. You know, I, I try not to focus on my opponent when I'm running. Right. I'm focused on me. But, but it seems to me that you are more for middle class, those that are struggling, living paycheck to paycheck. You're not for elitists. You're not for the top 1%. It seems like, no. and I'll just generalize, a lot mm-hmm. of Republicans today, not all of them, but MAGA Republicans are for giving tax breaks to the rich, uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of people, not just in Las Vegas, but across the country that are mm-hmm. still struggling, right? Yes. Uh, taking away a woman's reproductive rights is a big issue. And that yes, may be the deciding issue of I know this election. Right, and I know you're running for mayor, but mm-hmm. I can only speak for myself the way I vote. Mm-hmm. I want to know how people feel yeah. about these issues, even if they're not lawmakers, even if they're not going to change mm-hmm. a law per se, whether it be abortion. I want to know where my candidates stand on issues, whether it's for an assemblywoman or mm-hmm. mayor. So, But you're on the right side, in my opinion, of history of not telling women what to do with their own bodies. Uh, well, having been a woman all my life, it's right. a little – it's pretty important to me. And I think what it – did, if nothing else, um, and obviously I'm for a woman's right to choose. This is a, a bunch of uh, go- mostly guys in in Congress have no right to tell me what to do with my body. Mm-hmm. And I never realized that it was as strong a sentiment among women in this country, but I think we're seeing time and again and state after state that women care about having this right taken away from mm-hmm. them. But I think it signals more than that. If you can you know, interfere with a woman's right to choose, then you interfere with who somebody can love and marry. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, all of these fundamental rights that we as of American, uh, we as Americans have come to not only expect, but to treasure may be elusive and may be in danger of being taken away. And I think so. It's more than a woman's reproductive rights that's at stake. I think people are projecting into the future and thinking, well, if they can take this right away from me, they can take that right Agreed. away from you. Agreed. And I think, yeah. uh, but one of the things that I love about mayor, and you know, look, I was in the assembly, mm-hmm. I was on the board of regents, I was a seven term congresswoman, but what I love about mayor is the nonpartisan nature. And even in one of my commercials, because I said it so often, we decided to make a commercial out of it. If, if you have a pothole in front of your driveway that needs to be fixed, you don't care if the mayor is a Republican or a Democrat. Right. You want your darn pothole fixed, and that's what I do really I well. I feel like in the last, since Trumpism, for lack of a better term, we've kind of lost that as a country a little bit. I and there are that. still people out there like yourself, and, and we do hear Kamala Harris talk about this too. Listen, you're going to have a seat at the table whether you're a MAGA mm-hmm. Republican. And I think that's important, and I want a mayor like that who's willing to work with both sides. I think that's a really important part of the job, which I believe we, you will have. Um, what do you make of that, though, how divided we are, not just in Las Vegas, but I just feel like as a country, 
politically speaking, yeah. I, I, at least in my life. Well, it breaks my heart. Yeah. I mean, I it really does. I'm going to when years ago when I was in Congress, you know, I got the funding for the VA hospital in North Las Vegas. That was part of my right. congressional district. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the thing I'm most proud of uh, serving. Served 14 years. The VA hospital in North Las Vegas was my proudest accomplishment, as far as I'm concerned. Now, when we got the funding for that mm -hmm. and approval to build it, it was a Republican president, Republican VA secretary, Republican House, Republican Senate, and we still, we were able to work with our colleagues across the aisle, show them the need in Congressional District 1 in Nevada for a full-service VA hospital, and we got the funding. Mm -hmm. I don't think that could happen today. And mm. how unfortunate so is that? Mm. I mean, we were able. I was. I became very, very good friends with the VA secretary. Right. He was, uh, you know, an accolade of uh, of George Bush right. the second. Um, you know, they were close friends. He got the appointment from a Republican president. Uh, but we, I was able to bring him to Las Vegas. I we explained uh, that had uh, close to three hundred thousand veterans with no uh, no hospital here. And they had to go to Long Beach in order to get right. served. Uh, this is an old um, uh, Navy guy. Right. And uh, he understood what the need was. But that's was. a testament to you, though, too, because you're willing to work with others that you might not agree with oh, on definitely. A, num a number of different issues. And when I hear uh, Kamala Harris talk about that, too, I think you and her have that in common. Look, when I married my husband, he was a Heritage Foundation Republican. Yeah. Um, but he was also a Jewish doctor with money. I hope he, didn't, so vote. <laughs> he didn't vote for Trump, though. I know he didn't. No, not, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, but I mean, yeah. it didn't matter to me. I right. mean, what his politics was. It right. mattered that he was a good person. Right, no, I And agree. I, we ultimately yeah. married. But, um, yeah. you know, at the time it was, oh, because I was running for Congress when we started dating, running for the first time. And so I, here I am, you know, a, a, a Democrat, yeah. and he's a Heritage Foundation Republican. You know what? It was good for both of us. Uh, we both moderated our position somewhat, listening to uh, somebody that was thoughtful and intelligent, explaining their mm. side. Sure. And and I think it it served both of us very very and well. And I think we get Harris in office. We get you as our mayor. Uh, I I think we'll be in good shape. But more people like you that are willing to work with the other side and work together. I think that's so important. If you're just joining us, she is former Congress. Woman Shelby Berkeley. She's running for mayor of the great city here of Las Vegas, and I believe she is going to be our next mayor. And next time I think I see her, I will say, Mayor, it's good Ooh. to see you. So, uh, <laughs> yes, um, you know, you, you've been through plenty of elections yes, in your lifetime, right? You've been in politics a long time. So, I had Steve Sislak on the show last mm -hmm. week, and I said, Do you get an inkling or a feeling the day before that's usually oh, yeah. right about whether you're going to win or not? Even and sooner Sislak, than that. Right. And Sislak gave me a very honest answer, which I'm sure you will. He said, you know, I thought that first time around I was going to win, and I'll be honest with you, I thought Lombardo was going to get me. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I'll ask you. Um, are you usually right with your feelings on whether you're going to win? Because you've been through this before. You could you know, tell, especially when I was running for a, a, a lower races, not uh, not Congress, but the lower races, um, when you're not, because then you're doing a lot of door knocking. Right, right. And so I was walking precincts. I could tell early on, because I ran for the state Senate, uh, like in the 80s, and I lost. Uh, and But I knew it before uh, before the, the results started coming in. I could tell the reaction by and the door. And uh, you see, if you, and I laugh about this, but if somebody walks across the street when they see you, chances are they're not voting for you. Right. But now people are lining up. They want to have a picture with me. They want to talk to me. And that's when you know there's a good a good feeling in the community. And I uh, that's why I have a very good feeling about this race. Uh, so you can tell. I Good. mean, uh, people are not very. I mean, t uh, we just we just came back from Bagel Cafe. Oh, I love uh, that place. I know. <laughs> I, so I have the whole so family. Uh, you know, so I said, let's go to Bagel Cafe. Yeah. It's uh, first of all, it's uh, you know, that's where people from Sun City right. and everybody else congregate. Place is packed. I was just there with our mutual friend Jay Bloom last oh, week. Oh, yeah. I yeah. know. Jay loves that place. We missed a good Beetlejuice party. 
Oh, Halloween. You know, I had planned to. I had my costume all ready. By the time people stopped knocking at my door, it was late, and you I got a very important election coming I, up. So I think that's understandable. By then, I was so exhausted. Around yep. nine o'clock, and I looked at yep. my husband because we had a king and queen matching outfits, and so I looked at him, and the idea of getting off the couch yeah. and getting dressed in a costume and driving over to the party totally understandable. Yeah, I want to ask you uh, as a woman. What will it mean to you in the next couple days? Because mm -hmm. I think we'll find out in the next several days whether you win, whether Harris wins. What will it mean to you as a woman if not only you become the next mayor of the great city of Las Vegas, but Kamala Harris becomes the first female president? What um, will that, what will, that, will that be emotional? What, what will be going through your mind as the mayor? And then you have a, you have a president mm -hmm. who's a female. Um, I, I would be very pleased to see that. As you could imagine, I was a big Hillary supporter. I liked her as a person. I right. served with her in yep. Congress when she was in the Senate. Uh, and then, of course, Secretary of State. And I always admired her, thought for sure, thought for sure she was going to be president. Yeah. Um, I, I do not know um, Mrs. Harris. I, I've never met her. We've been served together. We've really? Learned, I'm uh, surprised you guys have never met before. I yeah. never met before. You've, met, you've been Joe Biden plenty of times. Many, right? many, many, many times. You know Joe very oh, well. Oh, yeah, and yeah. even earlier yeah. than that. Yeah. But um, So I don't know her personally, but I think I'd be very proud of this country if they voted for a woman who I believe is the most qualified candidate in that race. But what— uh, That's an understatement. What, yeah. <laughs> What a, what a tribute to the American people that maybe this is the breaking the fever of what we've experienced Let's over the so, last several we? years. So there are a lot of people that haven't voted yet in your race particularly. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. For people that are listening to the show right now that uh, they're on the fence. They don't know whether to vote for mm -hmm. you or not. They don't know whether to vote for your opponent or not. What would you say to them that are listening right now? Why should mm -hmm. Shelley Berkeley be the next mayor of the great city of Las Vegas? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. Um, look, the four generations of my family have called Las Vegas home. Uh, for a little uh, young town like Las Vegas, that's saying quite a lot. I didn't grow up in Las Vegas. I grew up with Las Vegas. When my family first got here, there were 80,000 people in the entire Las Vegas Valley. There's now over 2.5 million in the same geographic area. Mm. I have a wealth of experience, not only in the um, public offices that I've held. I have state experience because of the assembly. I've, I've obviously know education very well, served on the Board of Regents for eight years. I There is no issue confronting the city that I didn't deal with in Congress when Oscar Goodman was mayor because the city overlapped my congressional district. I'm fully prepared on day one to take the reins, but I know that a lot of people don't realize that I'm a working woman. When I got out of law school, so I'm an attorney by profession, um, I was the deputy director of the state commerce department. I was the administrator for banking, savings and loans, mortgage companies, and credit unions. I know finance. Then I was in-house counsel for Southwest Gas Corporation. I know energy. Right. I was a gaming attorney, vice president of government and legal affairs at the old Sands Hotel. If you're going to represent, you're going to be the mayor of Las Vegas, maybe you ought to know something about our major industry, and I yeah, do. Sure. And then finally, I was CEO of Toro University Medical School. I know health care. And that's one of the most important issues confronting Nevada, particularly Southern Nevada, is how uh, access to affordable health care. And you don't just have concepts of a plan. You actually no, I actually <laughs> know what I'm talking about. That's a good thing. Yes, that's yes, a, well, yes, that's a lot yes. of it. That's a lot of experience. I'm ready. You understand the city inside and out. And I love it. it. Yeah. And I love it. Look, I no longer. I used to talk a lot about my grandparents coming to America and being right. immigrants that couldn't speak English, and and all of that is true. But now. I'm focused on my grandchildren and you know my kids never left if you were my kid you wouldn't leave Las Vegas either so I, we're watching our grandchildren grow up and I have another one on the way they just announced uh, that uh, Vile is pregnant now mm -hmm. so I'm what thank you so what uh, I'm focused now on what Las Vegas should be like right. a decade from now 20 years from now when my grandchildren are here 
and and uh, being adults in this community. That's what I care about now. You're mayor on day one. What's the first priority for you? Well, it depends. If Badlands hasn't been settled, and I understand they are working very hard to come up with a solution now, if not, that will be my number one priority. We cannot continue. Every day we spend 20, the city spends $20,000 a day in interest payments on what we owe the developer. Mm -hmm. Let us come to a decision. You can't plan your budget for 2025 unless you know what you have to spend. So that's very impactful and very important. Get sure. that off the table. Sure. Then you deal with homelessness, affordable housing, economic growth and development development, which I think in the next decade, this town is going to explode yeah. in a very positive way. I know all, all the young developers downtown that are reimagining downtown Las Vegas. I went to most of their bar mitzvahs, so I know <laughs> these people very, very well. you know well. Joe Lombardo pretty well. Uh, I do, and I also. have a wonderful relationship with and him. And I bring that up because that's what we were talking about earlier. Yes, he's a Republican. Yes, I would imagine you don't agree with him on every policy mm -hmm. decision, neither do I, mm -hmm. but it's important to have a mayor that can work with the governor regardless. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and your relationship with him is a pretty good one. Right? Uh, we ha I have a good – the congressional delegation, two of the women in our congressional delegations were bridesmaids at my wedding. I mean, it's right. – uh, we are very – the uh, two uh, United States senators are very close personal friends as well as um, uh, professional friends of mine. And so uh, there isn't anybody in the yeah. city that I can't call that won't return my call and that I can do business with. And one of the things – and I know that you know this – um, all of the city council members have endorsed me right. over their colleague, um, uh, the, my opponent. And so all the county commissioners, all the yeah. city council people, they want to work with me. And I think I could bring everybody together because so many of the issues that are confronting us are not unique to Las Vegas. They're throughout southern Nevada. Let's work together on behalf of all of our constituents. I'm very, very um, – uh, engaged in that sort of activity, that behavior. Um, it doesn't do any of us any good to have petty differences and, and yeah. petty rivalries. I'm not about that, and I've reached That's a important. stage in my life. I mean, maybe 40 years ago when I was running for office, <laughs> right, right. it mattered to me if my name was called first or I was introduced. Now you just Those don't days are so far behind me. Yeah. And it just keep your eye on the ball, do the job that the people of Las Vegas have elected you to do mm -hmm. and uh, you know I'm not uh, I'm not looking for my next office I've already reached the You've zenith I'm coming back I'm coming back home to do the job of the uh, the people that because call you care Las Vegas so you home. care so much about this city that you I call love home. it I mean as do I look as we do I. my sister who's sitting yeah. right here my, we grew up here we made a right. life for ourselves right. in the middle of the desert who would have figured that out if, if someone said to you 40 years ago that and, and I don't want to jinx you I do believe you're going to win and we want people to get out and vote but yes. with that being said, if someone s told you decades ago that you would be the mayor. I thought I could be the Yeah. <laughs> I you believed thought, it. Yeah. I actually, um, I thought about being mayor for decades. Wow. And at the time, it and just. you just never ran. I, I never ran. There yeah. were other offices. That's interesting. Not all offices. People, yeah. um, after I lost the Senate race uh, a number of years ago, Senator Reed called me up and he said, how would you like to be a federal judge? I said, no, thank you. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have the judicial temperament. And he said to yeah. me, he said, I never would have dreamed you would say that. I said, I've always run for jobs that I thought I could do and were in my wheelhouse. Mm. Uh, so it was never running for the sake of running. And somebody else you were very close to, Harry Reid, of course. Um, yeah. You know, in, when I was a high school senior at Valley High School, there was two young guys running for the Nevada State Assembly. I wa started walking precincts for them. It was a 68 election. Yep. And um, I loved it. Fell in love with this I, uh, this ridiculous process that we have. One of them was Senator Reid and one of them wow. was Senator Richard Bryan. And that? what I love about this community is, and we became friends, and that was 1968 when they first ran. Uh, again, I was a senior at Valley, but 30 years later when I ran for Congress for the first time, both of them 
both of them walk precincts for me. Oh, Can you imagine wow. uh, hearing a knock at the door, opening your door, and seeing Harry Reid and Senator Bryan there? That's Whoa. incredible. Yeah, and they said uh, we're walking precincts for our friend Shelley Berkeley. That is so cool, and I'm so glad that it's the Harry Reid International Airport now. I'm so glad they <laughs> named it. I have, let's let's be clear on that. That's that's important, and I'm glad that. I'm, well, let me say this in closing here because I know you you have a very busy day today. <laughs> you have a lot of other places to go. Uh, I truly believe you're going to be a great mayor. I don't Thank want to you. jinx you. We have an important day tomorrow. We need people to get out and vote for you. Have to vote. Absolutely. Uh, I have no doubt that you will represent this city and, and do such a wonderful job in, in the best of ways because you care about the people here. You're from here. You've been here forever, and, and you understand what people in Vegas want, what they need, improvements that need to be made. You talked about that. So that's what we need to do. I'll give you the final pitch here before we go to break, and, and, I, and I really do appreciate you being here. And I think, I think um, we need more – women in powerful positions in this country we already have some we need more and whether i'm talking about the president whether i'm talking mm -hmm. about ceos of fortune 500 companies people that own casinos or the mayor mm -hmm. i want to see more women in powerful positions and uh, it's an issue that republicans seem to have mm -hmm. <laughs> i'll leave it at that but um i would love to see you as our next mayor and Thank uh, you so I, I will much. give you the final say opportunity to the prospective voters out there i i just want to encourage everyone that hasn't voted yet to please get out and vote tomorrow it's something that we as americans not only have a right to do we have a responsibility if you love your country if you want to make a difference if you want to be the one that selects people that are going to represent you don't miss this opportunity mm. uh, it, there's no excuse for not voting in Nevada yeah. you could vote early you could vote by mail you could vote on election day uh, people across the globe yeah. walk for miles uh, days in order to put an X on a ballot here let Let's take advantage of our yes. opportunity as American citizens to make a difference in our own lives. Very Get out well there said. and vote, everybody. Very well said, Shelley. And there's nothing more I'd rather do than on Wednesday to be able to call you the mayor. Just don't forget about your friend Brian when you become no. mayor, okay? Right. No, I would never do that. <laughs> well, Shelley, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks a lot. Uh, you already have my vote, and I know a lot of my listeners as well. So uh, Appreciate really, it. There you go. Former Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley, who I believe is going to be the next mayor of the great city of Las Vegas, and I know she'll do a great job. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to Pushing the Limits right here on KSHP.